Welcome to Tampa Home Talk with your host, native Tampa real estate girl, Katrina Madewell, a full-time, passionate, out-of-the-box thinker, love for home ownership kind of realtor with over 21 years of combined mortgage and real estate experience. Tune in every week at this time for expert advice on everything you need to know about home ownership, finance, maintaining great credit, building wealth, and making your everyday life better, and how you can be financially successful today and tomorrow. Remember, love where you live or let Katrina fix it. Now, here's your host of Tampa Home Talk, Katrina Madewell. Good afternoon. This is your host, Katrina Madewell on the Real Estate Radio Network. We are proud to bring you Tampa Home Talk today. We are live in studio, so I'm going to give you our on-air call-in studio phone number. If you have any questions for our guest today, Mark Basher, he's with Pest Patrol with a P, double P's there. And um, he we have a lot of fabulous questions lined up, at least five of the most frequently asked questions that he gets. He's been in business for 23 years in the area and just an amazing guy to have in studio to talk about bugs, right? So 727-441-3000. That's our studio call-in line. You can call us and Mark will answer your question. 727-441-3000. Again, 727-441-3000. We are also so uh, streaming live and we will be available the whole show via a podcast it's available YouTube also on Facebook and Twitter and across the web you can catch us via tune in radio if your signal is a little bit static and you want to hear the rest of the show thanks so much for joining us today for the show oh, thank you very much so let's dive right in and talk a little bit about some of the things that involve your business and I was looking at your questions and I thought they're fabulous and there's I'm going to throw myself under the bus and just talk about some <laughs> myths right that are out there with regards to pests and insects and all of that stuff so thanks for being our guest today I'm You're glad welcome. to Thank you. glad to bring 23 years in the studio okay so what do you think about bugs after doing it for 23 years uh it's uh it's very interesting I mean I've run into many many things over the time and um, it's it's kind of interesting to see um, how bugs have evolved, you know, over the years. How re- how they've become resistant to certain insecticides, and oh how my those gosh. insecticides have to change up for sure. So now I was looking at your frequently asked questions, and one of the things that you had right at the top of the list, which I thought was a fabulous place to kick our show off today, is how can people deter pests and insects and bugs from entering their home? Right, right. Well, the first thing that they can do is they can walk around the exterior of their home and look for cracks or holes that are in the, you know, in the structure itself. Um, any of those cracks or holes, they really need to be patched up, or you can put some kind of a uh, filler in the holes, like a, a brass wool or something like that, in order to uh, deter the pest from, from entering in. And I think the home improvement uh, places have the spray foam stuff that will also seal Correct. it too, yeah, right? Yeah, like the Flex Seal, and you've got the, um, you've got the uh, foam, the, you know, the... Uh, uh, the foams that will go ahead and expand. Yeah, that's what I was thinking yeah, of. Yeah. And it's it's interesting because, you know, we're in and around houses and the home inspectors always call, they call those things out because right. they know that the bugs can get in there. But they will see it. And I don't know a lot of times what all these little holes are for, but I know I've seen like your, you know, Bright House Verizon, those type of that's companies right. come and drill from the exterior side of the home where they're trying to bring cable or internet or whatever it is into your home. And sometimes they move those locations. That's right. That, that's right. And, you know, that's typically it with the wires and the pipes, you know, the pipes that are coming in for the, uh, for the plumbing and whatnot. Um, those little areas around the pipes and the wires definitely need to be sealed. Where were those things usually, where would people see those first? Like it would come up in the pl- in the plumbing and stuff, like maybe under the toilet or? No, typically, well, you know, on the exterior of the home by the bathrooms, um, if those are on the exterior walls, then you're definitely going to see some kind of plumbing over there. But, um, you know, when you're talking about like a, um, a a faucet bib or something like that on the exterior of the home, if it's coming from the inside, if your water's coming in from the, you know, from the inside to the outside, um, you're going to have a hole there as well. Uh, but definitely when it, when it comes to the wiring that, uh, you know, contractors will come in and, and drill those holes, like you're saying, um, those definitely need, need to be patched. Yeah, any way they can get in. And I imagine they're looking for a you know, nice temperature, dry type of place to hang out. Oh, absolutely. I mean, especially here in Florida where you've got, you know, warm and, and it's and it's uh, rainy all the time. You know, the ants, they'll be in the ground. And if it's raining and raining and raining for, you know, a week, 
on end, you'll have uh, you'll have ants wanting to move their nest in order to to save the uh, you know the babies, and so they'll go ahead and know the first place that they'll come into is your home uh, because it's dry. Excellent point. We actually got a call this week. We don't do any property management here at Tampa Home Talk, but we do um, offer, you know, a tenant location. And we have a client that's out of state and you would place a tenant. So she'll call us for every now and again to try to help her with stuff. But she has ants that came into the home and it's actually a town home, which is the responsibility of the HOA that can get a little hairy on who pays for what sometimes sure. but they she was experiencing the same thing and the HOA was saying that they've gotten a lot of calls and complaints lately because of all the rain that the ants are starting to come in yeah this is definitely the worst time of the year um, over the past couple of months I mean Pest Patrol has received numerous phone calls uh, about ants and uh, it's just one of the things that you have to deal with in Florida and uh, you know you either deal with it uh, yourself as a homeowner or you call in an expert so you see the ants definitely get moved when it's rainy but is there other bugs like do the the palmetto bugs or the roaches also definitely palmetto bugs is is another one on the list um, they'll definitely come inside of the house during the rainy season um, so they're trying to stay i mean they, i don't I imagine they probably could drown at some point but they're trying to stay cool and dry also that's right correct. so they're going to wiggle their way in any way possible that's correct so this what if you don't haven't noticed any cracks but you're seeing them do you think they slide in like under doors or Definitely, you know, underneath the doors or above the, do the doors um, is typically an area we'll, where we will apply a pesticide uh, in order to create a barrier uh, from those bugs entering, you know, the home or the unit. Um, so, yes. So what is what can someone do? Like, let's say they've walked the exterior of their home. They're having an issue with either ants or roaches or whatever the issue is. <clears throat> so they've looked around. They don't see any cracks. They don't see any holes or whatever holes they found they've sealed or patched. What else could someone do before they called out a professional like you to do that? And they can go ahead and try to obtain either a granule or a liquid type insecticide and place that around the perimeter of the home. Um, if that doesn't work, then they can go ahead and do an interior type uh, treatment for the, you know by themselves. And um, when all else fails, go ahead and call an expert. Now, how do you say? How do you think that stuff varies from some of the chemicals and the things that you use? Um, you know, I've looked at all of the labels on those chemicals that you would buy at a retail outlet, and uh, a lot of them are uh, quite watered down. Um, they do utilize a lot of the different. Um, um, chemicals themselves that we utilize but in a very weak state so it's just not as much that's correct so and it, i learned something actually today before you came on the show we started talking and i didn't realize that you guys have so many different types of licenses correct and i think it's something important that we should bring up in the show today and let you announce what those five different types of licenses are and, and what they are like what exactly do those mean gotcha so I know, I think the first one that you mentioned was lawn and ornamental. That's correct. That's how we first got started was with the uh, lawn and ornamental license. Um, obviously that's for uh, treating the lawn and the shrubs and the trees around, um, you know, a, a property. Um, both so that simply pertains to the exterior, is to, that right? Correct, correct. Okay. Um, you know, treating the lawn uh, for, for insects, particularly here in Florida, the chinch bugs during the, the warmer months. Are those the things like the beetles? Is uh, that the same? They're, they're, Looks like it. They they kind of they're they're so small they're probably about the size of the uh, the tip of your pen there. Okay. Okay. And um, they they have different colors for the different stages of life that they're in. And um, so what do they do? Well, I'm not familiar with those bugs. They they will eat away the uh, the Saint Augustine grass like you could never imagine. And okay. they do it in days. So if your grass all of a sudden starts dying, you might have these chinch bugs that, in your lawn. That's right. That's gotcha. Right. And so at what point can you guys salvage that? And you said they can eat the whole grass in days? Oh, they could. They can go through an area like, you know, that you wouldn't imagine in, in literally days. So speaking about that, what, some, what are some of the warning signs that someone should look for that might clue them well, off and make them go hey this is probably going on typically typically the chinch bugs will get started on um, in the grass areas that are next to driveways or sidewalks or the roadways um, particularly you know liking that that certain area because of the heat that those uh, that the concrete is giving off there um, but what they'll see is they'll start seeing yellowing of the blades of grass 
and then you know you pretty much have something going on. If you know if the soil is dry or any or anything else is stressing the lawn out at the, at that point in time, um, you're more than likely going to get the chinch bugs come in and try to uh, try to do it off. So they're going to try to attack a lawn that's already a little bit compromised. Is that right? Sure. Sure. Okay. I'm, I'm so green to this stuff. I have to ask you all these questions. So, and then the next type of license is, you said general household pest license? That's correct. And so what does that entail? Just the spraying on the inside? That, or? that entails the, uh, you know, the, the pest treatments for uh, general household uh, pests, uh, roaches and ants, silverfish, spiders, and such. And, um, you know. If you've ever had those things, like I remember one time we had those silverfish those little they're like silver little bugs yeah. that they're oh, they like multiply and they you still do the bait traps or no oh absolutely okay just curious because we had those once and it was just like where are these things coming from but it seems like they like boxes and dark places right so Correct. if you have a box maybe that was in your garage and then you bought it inside it, it's possible that that's right that's where they came from definitely i mean with the silverfish and the cockroaches um they like to hide in and out of the, the corrugated sections of those uh, boxes. Oh, and so, so you can't even see them. Well, that, I mean, you know, this is definitely something that, that the listeners need to know is that if you're going to be bringing in a box inside of your house, you know, that may have been from, um, you know, in the garage or had been moved in while you were moving into the house, you definitely need to take the contents out and get that box out of the house as soon as possible because you'll, you, you more than likely there's roach eggs inside those corrugated sections. Or maybe even go through it outside, right? That's it right. might be a better plan and sure. like clean up whatever you're going to do, wipe it down and bring it in. Yep. <laughs> Just a better chance to eliminate that. Some of the things that I know that we've encountered, not personally, but I have seen them and I've heard about them, is the German cockroaches. And I don't know the difference, but I've always heard they're worse and they multiply. And Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, with the American brown cockroach, you're looking at one single mother having about 15 to 25 babies every two to three weeks. So those weeks. are the regular big bugs that Correct. we see. Then when you're talking about the German cockroaches, they're a lot smaller and normally they're darker in color and you'll one mother will have anywhere between 20 and 30 babies every two to three weeks so if you just do the numbers you know it's an exponential uh, craziness uh, you know 10 10 mothers there with uh, that many you're talking two, two to three hundred babies every two to three weeks um, it, it, it can get into an infestation in a heartbeat that's that whole thing just totally creeps me out and i know my husband freaks about that and i try to explain to him and hopefully he's listening today that it's not like because our house is clean but you can still get bugs if it's raining because they're going to try to come inside absolutely so and i try to tell him there's a pattern here like when it's raining outside we might see a bug that's kind of how the trend's going yeah you know i've been into a lot of homes you know over the time and it really doesn't they don't pests don't pick dirty homes over clean homes you know more often than not. I mean, I've been into very, very clean homes, people utilizing bleach on the countertops all the time, and they'll still have pests. It yeah, just, they're looking for that cool place. You yeah. So our studio call in line, in case you have any questions for our guest today, Mark Vasher, 23 years experience in the pest control industry. He's with Pest Patrol. Our studio call in line, 727-441-3000. If you have any questions, just give us a shout today, and Chris will patch you in so you can ask Mark those questions. 727-441-3000. Again, studio call in line. We can, you can get to a safe place as you're driving home to dial up and ask those questions. 727-441-3000. Come back in just a minute. We're going to dive into some of those next frequently asked questions that Mark gets and some pest myths. We'll be back in just a minute. Hi, this is Aaron Davis, owner of Hillsboro Title. Hillsboro Title is a local, family-owned title agency here in Tampa Bay. Our service, strength, and knowledge make us different. We've served Tampa Bay area for over 30 years. From Polk County to the Gulf, Pasco to Manatee, Tampa Bay, we've got you covered. Call us at 813-712-8888 or visit us on the web at thebesttitle.com. That's thebesttitle.com. You've heard this before. Interest rates are at all-time record lows. But if your interest rate is 4% or above, you owe it to yourself to call Silverton Mortgage Specialist. Silverton is a direct lender, and the best part about this is that the entire loan process is handled in-house. 
From application to close, we do it all in the same building, which means that our loans close fast and our clients know what's going on every step of the way. Our contact info is located on tampahometalk.com under radio show. What makes Silverton different? Products. We offer VA, FHA, USDA, and conventional loans pricing. Best rates with the lowest closing cost. Process everything in-house. It's handled right here and not outsourced to anyone that no one can reach. This way we can avoid surprises. Our people are simply the best, and we know you'll agree. What will closing Silverton Mortgage Specialist mean to you? A smooth process, real home loan value, and personal attention from real professionals. Silverton Mortgage Specialists are here to serve you. Visit TampaHomeTalk.com under Radio Show for all of our contact details. NMLS 109600 is an equal housing lender and Florida and Georgia residential mortgage licensee. Hi, this is Melissa Rogers, owner of SEC Inspection Services. We're so glad that you're listening today that we're offering you a special deal. If you're purchasing a home, you can have $50 off your full home inspection. And if you're already a client of ours, we're offering 10% off of any other service that we offer. Just give us a call at 727-786-4663 or visit us on the web at secinspection.com. Welcome back. You're listening to Tampa Home Talk, and I'm your host, Katrina Madewell, on the Real Estate Radio Network. Thanks so much for joining us today. We have Mark Basher in studio today with Pest Patrol, and our studio calling lines are open because we are live, 727-441-3000. So if you have some bug questions or you're wondering how to maybe treat something or get rid of a pest on your own, give us a shout, 727 441 3000. You can also catch our show in its entirety in case you're getting in and out of the car and you miss something or you want to catch the prior information or you, or you miss part of the show. Just look for TampaHomeTalk.com. We're also on Facebook and Twitter at Tampa Home Talk. Welcome back to the show. So let's dive into the next part. I know we were talking about um, the different types of licenses you have to have, which there's five different ones. We talked about lawn and ornamental, which is how you treat the grass and, and that type of stuff. There's a different license for the inside. Correct. And then one of the next licenses is termite, right? That's correct. And is that just to do a termite inspection or what is that? No, that's to do uh, termite uh, you know, treatments and inspection. And uh, that's pretty much it. You know, I mean, there's, a, there's, it's, it's so, uh, there's so much of it going on and so much devastation caused by it that, um, that there's a separate license for well, it. Well, I imagine the chemicals and the treatments and the process and like everything you have to do for each one of these categories and licenses are different. Correct. Is, and that's probably hence the reason why there's different licenses. Correct. I mean, and there's, there's you know, changes that take place um, with the chemicals that get utilized and the way that, um, you know, that the, uh, that the, the rules, laws and regulations, you know, um, have us on, on doing types of treatments. Um, so for each one of these licenses, we have to, uh, we have to take a, a continuing education on a yearly basis in order to, to maintain to, our To license. renew and keep that's it. Correct. Gotcha. So one of the other ones you talked about, and I know you said your company doesn't do it, but it's one of the ones that are out there is fumigation and tinting. That's correct. That's correct. Um, there are companies out there that do do the fumigation or the tenting uh, for homes and, you know, they'll do it in, do it for um, uh, cases where there's a severe infestation of, of some type of pest. Um, and that could be roaches or termites or anything, that, right? That's right. That's Those right. are the big blue tents that you see the entire house. <laughs> yeah, sometimes in. they're white and yellow, you know, uh, looking tents. But, um, yeah, they, you know, they do their job on that and, um, you know. And so the last one was lake and pond. It's an aquatic pest or an aquatic license. That's right. That's right. So that's the treatment of the uh, the weeds and algae and whatnot in lakes and ponds. I that's so fascinating. I would love to talk about that because I know we are on the water and constantly like we see the the grass kind of go down into the lake and it's like how do you get rid of that? 
how do you get rid of the grass like in the lake so it looks nice but not kill the fish or any of the animals in the water right right well that's why you you know that's why there's uh, state testing and whatnot to, to obtain these licenses so that you know how to utilize those chemicals appropriately um they're you know for for the most part herbicides aren't going to affect or harm any kind of living um animal but definitely when you're when you're putting you know large doses of these chemicals into a pond more than likely you're going to be uh, doing some type of, of damage that you're not intending to do um so, but, so that's is the are the um, pesticides that you use for you know under that aquatic license for the lakes and the ponds is it is it safe for the most part for the animals and the fish as long as as long as the, you know the, uh, the the labels are being followed um, you know as um, as they've been written then yes um, so that makes sense and I would love if we have time to talk about that a little bit more as the show progresses now when summer when you're talking about and this is a great one actually i have no idea the answer to this question and i can't wait for you to answer it and if you're listening to the show and you want to call in i'm gonna give you our studio call in lines because we're live not always because we're here every thursday and saturday at five but today we are live 727-441-3000 in case you have any questions for mr mark vasher 727-441-3000 so the key visual differences between flying ants and termites that one's fabulous yeah i get that one all the time and um you know the, the the key visual differences ants will have elbowed type antenna whereas termites do not um, ants will have a pair of wings whereas the back wing will be smaller than the front wing on a termite the wings are both the same size and shape okay so they have two different sets of wings there's you know two uh, two wings on each side okay i was thinking you were saying four i was like wow i never noticed yeah, that yep yeah. and um uh, the other things you'll have there is the um, the veins inside of those wings. There's fewer veins in the in the wings of the ants, whereas there's a lot more uh, veins in the wings of the termites. So it makes it look lace-like. Okay, um, and then finally, the ants have longer legs than termites do. Okay. Gotcha. But they, I imagine, they probably resemble a lot of things. And to the layperson, you might not be able to. Oh, absolutely tell those. not. No, absolutely not. Because I know I see ants with wings, and if <laughs> if the buyer is not getting a loan that requires a termite inspection, maybe they weren't going to get it. If I see an ant with a wing, I'm like, you better order a termite inspection just in case. Well, it's not just a termite inspection because those um, those inspections that are required, uh, you know, for the mortgage or for, for the loan company, whatever it might be, those are actually WD wood destroying organism inspections okay so the the flying ants which are typically going to be your carpenter ants yeah, those so I was are gonna actually ask doing you how those damage vary. as well okay okay so you know that's why that's those why, are the big ants right the carpenter ants are the big ones with the wings well they can be they can be smaller as well it just depends on on the uh, the stage of the life cycle that they're in uh, for instance uh, just this past month uh, you typically have the reproduction uh, taking place for the carpenter ants and there was quite a bit of, uh, of flying ants out there that a lot of people were thinking were termites okay now they what how far do they fly uh, typically you'll typically what I see is that they'll be around a body of water so there might be like a, a lake or a pond near the structure and um, you know maybe a quarter of a mile in my experience is where I've seen them you know fly around too and they'll find them find their uh, find themselves up into like the attics okay and then they'll try to do some type of damage what with the carpenter ants what do those eat i mean obviously termites eat wood regular ants are looking for food the carpenter ants will be eating wood as well so they eat wood too that's correct how does the damage that they do compare to what termites do like is one more slower moving than the other sure carpenter ants are definitely slower eating it than the termites would be okay but they're still going to eat wood like termites, so they can still essentially do the same dana- damage. Yeah, it just takes longer time. Do they tunnel like termites do? Uh, creating like a galley type thing? Yeah, or is that just subterranean? Yeah, you'll no, no, you'll see that in both, uh, you know, the dry wood termites, subterranean termites. You'll see that with ants as well, okay? Um, and you'll also get the sawdust, you know, like uh, little mountains, okay? That'll give you a, a good indication. Those are termites or... Termites or um, with, okay. with the termites, yeah. The, uh, I was going to say, the now regular ants, do they eat wood or no? It's just the carpenter ants, right? Correct, correct. And it's really the carbohydrates that, are going, that they're going after. 
I gotcha. It's interesting because the layperson definitely, I don't think, knows the difference in ants and termites, and they all kind of look the same. It's a bug, right? Yeah. <laughs> so boric acid, we've heard that, and I think this is something that grew up maybe like in my grandpa's day and in his generation, and I've heard that before, but I don't really know how people would utilize it. So maybe you can share sure. like what people think and how it actually works, but does boric acid actually take care of the pest problems? Well, it's definitely part of the solution. Uh, boric acid it's not so much utilized today uh, in you know in its raw form it is utilized but not as much what a lot of these uh, manufacturers have done have is that they've worked off of the boric acid and created new types of products that um, that work more efficiently for us okay more water resistant so they don't clump up like a boric acid would and um, but it, it, it definitely has its place in um, in the in the solution. Okay. So uh, how would most people apply boric acid? Just out of curiosity, they leave like a little tub, or do they spread it around? Are they spraying it? You know, I mean, I've seen I've 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 been into homes where people um, have put it inside inside of the corners of the baseboards and whatnot. Um, you can do that, but you know, if you've got pets or, or uh, children in the house, definitely wouldn't recommend. That was my that. next question: okay. Is it harmful to, right. to pets? I, I definitely wouldn't have it around uh, pets or small children. Okay, I mean, if you're going to be putting it anywhere, it might be inside of like the cabinets in the kitchen and in the bathrooms. Um, cabinets. Those where, nice little wet, cold, dry, dark areas, it. right? It's where the you roaches like, because they're nocturnal bugs, aren't they? Uh, you, well, for the most part, you'll see them come out at night, but <laughs> I've been in plenty of places where while I'm working and, and, and completing a treatment, they'll be swarming around me. Is there certain bugs that are nocturnal versus not? Uh, for, you know, for the most part, they're going to be hiding, um, you know, from, from a threat like yourself. And uh, so then they'll, for the most part, come out during the nighttime. Okay. But they're, so they're know, nocturnal just for, um, like, a self-defense mechanism. Yeah, and then when you've got spiders, uh, for instance, the fishing spiders, the large fishing spiders, they'll come out at nighttime because their prey comes out at night. They're eating cockroaches, okay? Yeah. <laughs> My husband has this running joke, like, if you have the spiders, then you don't have the roaches. But, you know, you just, I guess you have to pick your battles at that point. Yeah. <laughs> So you're listening to Tampa Home Talk, our studio call in line 727-441-3000. If you have any questions for Mr. Mark Vasher with Pest Patrol, 727-441-3000. We're going to take a really quick break. When we come back in a minute, we're going to talk about how you can effectively treat your lawn for insects, fungus, weeds, and more. And then we'll get into some of the myths and frequently asked questions that people get. We'll be back in just a minute. You're buying a house. Congratulations. So while you're worrying about the paperwork, leave the moving part to us. We're Woody and Sons Moving Company, a Florida licensed and insured mover, and we offer same day written estimates. Plus, no sneaky mileage, stairs, or additional stop fees. All we ask is that you check out our great ratings on Google and Angie's List, then go to WoodyandSons.com to learn more. Whether you need a full service pack and move or some extra hands, at Woody and Sons Moving Company, we move you. You've heard this before. Interest rates are at all-time record lows. But if your interest rate is 4% or above, you owe it to yourself to call Silverton Mortgage Specialist. Silverton is a direct lender, and the best part about this is that the entire loan process is handled in-house. From application to close, we do it all in the same building, which means that our loans close fast and our clients know what's going on every step of the way. Our contact info is located on tampahometalk.com under radio show. What makes Silverton different? Products. We offer VA, FHA, USDA, and conventional loans pricing. Best rates with the lowest closing cost. Process everything in-house. It's handled right here and not outsourced to anyone that no one can reach. This way we can avoid surprises. Our people are simply the best, and we know you'll agree. What will closing Silverton Mortgage Specialist mean to you? A smooth process, real home loan value, and personal attention from real professionals. Silverton Mortgage Specialists are here to serve you. Visit TampaHomeTalk.com under Radio Show for all of our contact details. NMLS 109600 is an equal housing lender and Florida and Georgia residential mortgage licensee. 
Aaron Davis here, owner of Hillsboro Title, serving all of Tampa Bay. Our service, strength, and knowledge make us different. From Polk County to the Gulf, Pasco to Manatee, Tampa Bay, we've got you covered. Visit us on the web at thebesttitle.com. That's thebesttitle.com. Tampa Bay's Tan Talk. Entertaining and informative radio for the Sunshine State. Welcome back. You are listening to the last half of Tampa Home Talk on the Real Estate Radio Network. I'm your host, Katrina Mainwell, and in studio today we have Mark Basher, 23 years in the pest control industry, works with a fabulous company, part owner, Pest Patrol, and we had some great questions that we answered in the beginning part of the show. So if you missed any part of today's show where we talked about what you can do to deter pests from entering your home. How do you, what do you look for when you're inspecting for termites? Uh, what are the key differences between flying ants, termites, carpenter ants, or so many variations of ants, boric acid, and much more. You'll definitely want to catch out our show in the in its entirety. We replay it via a podcast that's available. We also have it available on YouTube. And you can find it on our show page on Facebook, Twitter, and across the web. Just search for Tampa Home Talk and You'll find myself and my amazing guests that I have in studio like Mark today. So if you have any questions for Mark, since we are live this Thursday afternoon, our studio call-in lines are 727-441-3000. I know somebody out there has a bug you got a question about. 727-441-3000. So one of the other questions that you get a lot is how can people treat their lawn for insects, fungus, weeds, that type of stuff? Correct. Um, all of those things can be treated by a homeowner. Um, what I do suggest is that they get in, in touch with their local county extension to figure out um, what the nutrient requirements are for that particular type of grass that's in their yard, as well as what the soil um, conditions are like. They can take a sample of their soil over to the county extension and have that um, analyzed for them. Let's talk about that for just a moment, because I think that the average person, I'm pretty sure that I speak for a lot of people, when I say that they don't know what the county or city extension service is. So can, will you elaborate on that just a little bit before you continue as far as what that county or city's role is because there is within pretty much every, every municipality they normally right. have an extension service right they provide different services and um, you know everything from financial type services to the agricultural type services um, really. now they do they, they deal with like moles and like the ones that travel underground and tunnel right do they deal with those too I think they do um, you know some of some of the county extensions deal with different things uh, whereas others so won't. So gators? What are we saying? No, I mean, I've run into um, to several different uh, county extensions, and some of them will have a um, an expert on site for, you know, um, protect particular type of insect or, or whatnot. And um, so it all, it all varies by county, but um, it's definitely a good source to start with, you know, to visit the county extension to get... Um, uh, you know, uh, well, their budgets probably vary from one place to another. Also, I couldn't tell you that. I have. No I mean, idea. I'm sure it does. Every county and municipality has a different budget and amount they spend and they get and all that stuff. Yeah. So, so to to treat it, you have to figure out what nutrients it's lacking, what it needs. Definitely, because here in here in Florida, we have different types of grass. You've got the Saint Augustine, and there's different variations of the Saint Augustine. You've got the zoysia grass, which um, is now being utilized quite uh, quite a lot. Yeah, that one's getting popular we're starting to hear that one a lot it sure is then you've got bermuda and bahia uh, grasses uh, so all of those different grasses require different nutrients at you know different uh, intervals throughout the year and uh, each one of them comes along with its own um, you know um, basket of in either insects or fungus okay now the fungus is that usually what starts discoloring the grass first or no um it, a fungus will definitely turn, uh, you know, patches of, um, of grass brown, or you'll get what they call dollar spot, where you'll see little brown patches um, in the grass. Um, that can that can happen in both the St. Augustine and the zoysia. Um, in my experience, zoysia seems to be a lot more susceptible to fungus uh, than the other uh, types of grass here in Florida. Why is that one gaining so much popularity? Does it need less water usually to grow, or what's the deal with that so, one? Uh, supposedly, it's supposed to need less uh, less watering because the roots are shallower than the other varieties. Um, but 
I remember that. I remember Zoysia being tried out in Florida back in the late 80s, early 90s, and um, it kind of petered off there for quite a while. And then over the past couple of years, it seems to be making a, uh, a comeback. Um, I'm always curious why that type of stuff happens, like why there's changes. Like, is it aesthetic? Is it pests? Is it, you know, water? Like, what's the key reasons why people change those type of trends you know maybe aesthetic uh, contractors will typically put in something that's going to uh, you know attract a buyer to buy in a house maybe it lasts a little longer right. needs a little less water right. that kind of thing's always important sure because you know the builders they're constantly trying to water and make sure they're because it's expensive to reset sure. a lawn so they want to make sure that they, you know with the grass they have there will stick around that's for a right. while so some of the so what do they do exactly just so i'm clear as far as treating that lawn i mean they have to figure out what it needs but like what do they do what if they don't know right well you can split it up i mean you've got um, you've got the chemicals that you need to utilize for the fertilizer and then you've also got insecticides that you're going to have to purchase um, as well as uh, fungicides to purchase uh, in order to be treating your lawn and then it, finally you've got uh, herbicides for weed control within the lawn so there's quite a few products that have to be purchased in order to maintain that lawn on, um, you know yourself um, when it comes to the fertilizer um, like I was saying the county extension can help you figure out the nutritional requirements and the intervals at which to, to put that down onto the turf um, that's fairly you know fairly an easy one to, to, to figure out when it comes to the insects though a lot of homeowners need to realize is that um, you know, they, they may have one particular type of insect in their lawn and not realize it and be treating it with a particular insecticide that isn't labeled for that insect. And so they could be really wasting money uh, with the purchase of that particular insecticide that they had used. Is it gonna, will it do any further damage if they're using the wrong thing to treat the wrong thing? Well, the insect will, will just continue It'll to, multiply. That's right. That's what I was wondering. I was thinking about that because with, you know, with any business, like your business or my business, I'm obviously gonna know a lot more about like contracts and real estate specifics and things that are around real estate law than you would. And the same thing goes with, with grass and pest and that type of stuff. I could easily see where someone would treat a lawn with the wrong thing because they're not sure. Like they're thinking what it is. And, and the problem is with the internet, there's so much information and some of it's opinion and some of it's fact. That's right. That's right. So I think it really takes someone with the appropriate license and knowledge and experience that deals with this stuff on a regular basis to kind of understand what's going on. Well, that, but it also, if, if you really need to compare the cost, you know, associated with it. I mean, if you go, as a homeowner, if you go out and you try to, to purchase the fertilizer, the insecticide, the fungicide, and the herbicide that you need in order to maintain your lawn, and you weigh that against how much it costs to hire an expert to come in and take care of it on a, on a monthly or an every six week basis, um, a lot of times times you'll find it's a it's, it's a lot cheaper just to hire an expert because they have access to those different chemicals and they have the knowledge uh, to detect uh, what insects are in your lawn or what type of fungus is um, in your lawn at the time and how to appropriately treat that you know I mean it makes sense to me and I what I'm thinking is who would want those chemicals sitting around anyway I wouldn't well, yeah, you don't want them sitting around in your garage, especially you know there again if you've got uh, you know, children or you've got pets, um, you know. If it's in the garage, it's just more likely that someone might make it into it that shouldn't be. Now, is your company, is that green certified? Are you green certified or is, is that a training or a license or do you know? No, I'm not familiar with that. Because I know it, there seems like there's more and more like green designations and, and that type of stuff. And I was just curious if you had any opinion or thoughts on, on green products because... I've heard very mixed things, like well, the, sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. Well, there's a lot of different um, organic type insecticides that, that definitely work, um, and we do utilize those in our daily you know, practice. Um, so is that with everything or just with as much as you can? As, as much as you can possibly you know, utilize. Um, you know, that's for both the, uh, the lawn as well as the general household uh, pests that gotcha. we run into. Okay. So, and we were talking, I know before the show started about, about fleas and that type of stuff. And I know for me, I've been out showing properties and especially with all the bank owned properties and the vacant properties we've had, it's crazy. Some of these places have just a total infestation of fleas, not only on the inside, but on the outside. And it's just gross. I mean, and if you have a pair of like white socks on or anything, they're going to flock right to your socks. I oh, mean, absolutely. I've gotten bit so bad being out just with that. And that's why I keep bug spray in my car just to 
alleviate that in case it happens. It's correct. Like the daily things that we do sometimes are nuts. And you don't think about that stuff till you bring it up or you start talking about right. it. So what do you do in a case like that where you have fleas infested either in your house or in the lawn? Because that's where they come from, right? Even if you get them away in the house that, you know, the animal can go outside, come back in, boom, you got them again. Right, right. I mean, the animal needs to be treated, uh, you know, if you don't treat the animal, you're definitely going to continue to have the issue. There's no doubt about that at all. Yeah, because they're they're going after them. It's like, you know, anything else that's attracted to blood or whatever it is, they're going after your pet. That's right. That's right. You know, once the, once the pet is treated, then you can go ahead and start uh, utilizing some kind of pest treatment um, uh, in order to... Uh, to resolve this you know the issue um, both on the outside and the inside what's the multiplication like on that do you know because i think fleas multiply like cra crazy numbers yeah, you're going to have one mother that's going to create a thousand babies oh okay? my gosh so one little flea turns into a thousand that is nuts that's right. and then you know those fleas are tiny i mean and that's i guess that's why you could get so many of them oh yeah so talk about the um, the raccoons, the possums, the squirrels, because you guys deal with some of that too, right? Absolutely. Uh, homeowners definitely need to take a walk around the exterior of their home and uh, look up at the eaves and look up at where the uh, different uh, sections of the roof meet one another and make sure that all of those holes are all covered up, you know, either with wood or some kind of uh, a hardware cloth type thing in order to... Um, to make it to where is nothing can get into the attic. Uh, we run into that a lot with squirrels, the raccoons, the opossums, getting into people's attics, doing damage up there, um, dying up there. Uh, then you've got a, 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 a horrible, horrible smell, smell in your on house. the inside of the house, you know, and then trying to find that animal once it's died up there in the in the attic. Um, <laughs> You'll find it once it's dead. <laughs> it's not it's not always so easy. You know, a lot of times they'll be up in a uh, in a in a little crevice in the attic where you can't get to um, or they have fallen down into a void, you know, uh, within a wall. Um, so then you're going to have to start cutting holes into the wall in order to try to, de you know, find this animal. Um, so it's always easier to just deter the, the, the pest by closing up those holes on the outside. And so let's talk about that because I'll bring up another point. And I know our inspectors tag this all the time, which is why we see it. And I'm constantly like, telling buyers this if we're out looking at properties and I notice it. But you have to pay attention to the uh, shrubberies and the trees and all that type of stuff on the outside of your home. Definitely. If you have trees that are too close to your home and the squirrels or any of those animals can get up the tree and on your roof, that's how they're going to get into your house. You got it. And we're starting to see more and more the vent stacks or the lead boots on the attic. Everybody has them, right? Because everybody has indoor plumbing. The squirrels love those things. They they jump from the trees literally to your roof, and they sharpen their teeth on the lead boots on the roof so that they can eat acorns and nuts and that type of thing better. And we're starting to see on the four-point inspections that you have to have to get a decent insurance rate, they're, they're flagging those things, and they're requiring those things to be fixed. And it's such a simple inexpensive fix like it's really not an expensive thing sure. to do but they can do a lot of damage if they keep gnawing and eating they can rust i mean there's a lot of things that can happen sure but it's it's just amazing something as simple and i had a roofer actually teach me that one time he's like i'm like why do they get like that i see this all the time in these houses on these inspections like why are these things always chewed up well the squirrels go sharpen their teeth on it so they can eat nuts it's like oh <laughs> you know you, you don't think about that stuff but surely the the trees pay attention to the stuff touching your house or anything that's close enough that a squirrel can jump everybody's seen a squirrel jump yeah not just squirrels but i mean you know the trees and the shrubbery around the house you know you need to keep all that away in order to keep things like ants from from crawling on over and making homes up there in the eaves and in the attics i'll okay. tell you another thing too and these are like the small things that homeowners should be paying attention to or even tenants because they can cause a much bigger problem like if the trees if the trees are not trimmed and that type of stuff we had a house before that and it wasn't a personal house when i say a house i mean for a client but there was rats that actually got up into the attic through those uh, vent ridges on the edge of the roof right. they got in there and literally chewed through the ductwork in the attic Sure. So the AC ducts just no, 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 no. That's super expensive. Sure. Like to, when you have to go in and start replacing all the duct work in the house, and then sometimes even the AC system if it gets too far. 
Yep, you got it. And so that little bit of deferred maintenance can be can be huge. Just to patch up those holes, make sure that animals can't get in. Anything else you guys are seeing? Yeah, you know, on a lot of the manufactured homes out there, you know how they will set the uh, set the home up on um, on the on the, um, on the concrete. Yeah, they're plates. up on stilt or something. Right. It's not a slab. You know, the one thing that that I always recommend to customers is go ahead and get yourself uh, some of the hardware cloth from the uh, retail outlet, and um, and go ahead and attach that to the side. You know of the home in order to close off the under side of the um of the structure gotcha okay. yeah i mean in those crawl spaces anything that has those little crawl spaces you can certainly get critters in there we have to take a really quick break but when we come back in a second we're going to talk about some of the critters that you guys might see under there and some of the things that you might have to chase down and then hopefully mark has some funny fantastic stories i love to share a little bit of humor the last part of the show so you're listening to tampa home talk this is your host katrina madewell we'll be back in just a minute stand by Hi, this is Aaron Davis, owner of Hillsboro Title. Hillsboro Title is a local, family-owned title agency here in Tampa Bay. Our service, strength, and knowledge make us different. We've served Tampa Bay area for over 30 years. From Polk County to the Gulf, Pasco to Manatee, Tampa Bay, we've got you covered. Call us at 813-712-8888 or visit us on the web at thebesttitle.com. That's thebesttitle.com. You're buying a house. Congratulations. So while you're worrying about the paperwork, leave the moving part to us. We're Woody and Sons Moving Company, a Florida licensed and insured mover, and we offer same day written estimates. Plus, no sneaky mileage, stairs, or additional stop fees. All we ask is that you check out our great ratings on Google and Angie's List, then go to WoodyandSons.com to learn more. Whether you need a full service pack and move or some extra hands, at Woody and Sons Moving Company, we move you. Hi, this is Melissa Rogers, owner of SEC Inspection Services, where we offer full inspections and insurance inspections. Give us a call at 727-786-4663 or visit us on the web at secinspection.com. Welcome back to Tampa Home Talk. And we are talking about just a delightful thing today. <laughs> bugs, bugs, and more bugs. <laughs> Not something fun. I'm trying to keep my producer back there from yakking. Anyway, we're, we really are have some great information for you today for homeowners and even tenants alike. I know Jen was talking about even the apartment that she's in having, having fleas. And sometimes that stuff can be there even when you move in. So if you missed any part of today's show, catch our show in its entirety because we had some of the five most frequently asked questions that Mark Basher gets. And you can find the show in its entirety very soon across the web, on Facebook, on Twitter, and simply by going to our website at tampahometalk.com. Our off-air number in case you want to call us or text us if you have questions about today's show or if you have questions for our guest, 813-377-2775. Again, you can call or text us at our off-air number. We'll be happy to answer any real estate or other questions. 813-377-2775. So we were talking and uh, I had to ask Mark during the break. I said, no, nothing crazy like squirrels jumping on your head or anything like that. He's like, no, no. I like, okay, said, all right, so let's share the horror story. So we're going to we're gonna dive in. This is not for the weak stomach. <laughs> no, definitely not. I mean, you know, talking about those fleas, they can definitely you know it can become a very very bad problem real fast and um, I've, I'd gone into one house one time um, at the request of a uh, of a property manager and uh, I always start in the back room for the treatments I walked in there and uh, we're in khaki pants on at the time and had finished spraying the floor of that room and then I looked down at my pants and they literally looked black oh. With, and it, it was just fleas all over the place. I can't even imagine how many millions of fleas uh, there were, that is. There, was def there weren't hundreds, there weren't thousands. There was definitely a million fleas on me at the time. Oh. And so, <laughs> you know, I had to, had to go outside there and, uh, and, and spray them off, knock them off. And then what I ended up doing is I, I lifted up my, my uh, pant legs there and they had gotten underneath the, the pant legs and they were on my legs. 
all the way up to my knees, okay, and just eating away at me. And uh, was able to get them all off and, and <laughs> got in touch with the property manager. And, you know, was wondering why she hadn't told me that it was so bad in there. I, I had to go back over there with with a full out suit on and uh, with, <laughs> with with the suit duct taped to my to my boots <laughs> and to my gloves with a full face mask on in oh order to treat this house. Talk about hazmat. Oh, tell me. <laughs> You know, so it, it can definitely get crazy. I mean, it, when it comes to cockroaches, I've definitely have seen infestations of cockroaches, you know, going gone into people's uh, homes there where they've let it just get out of control. And literally, you'll see cockroaches down the um, the tubes um, uh, for the bed frames. If you look down the tubes with a flashlight, you'll see just nothing but uh, cockroaches, you know, squirming around in there. That is creepy. I something can't well, it's something like, like that. out of a movie. So. You know, you know, talking about the fleas too. I was thinking about you wearing this crazy, you know, you know, sure. suited up. Oh, the, the neighbors the all poor, came out wondering what was going on. <laughs> Can you imagine the poor pets, like, because they're not going to really eat you. They bite humans and like jump off. But like the pets, they're literally sucking their yeah. blood. Yeah, it's it's you know it, that's just uh, it, it's cruel to the animal and definitely you don't want to be doing that. So you had another story too. You're starting to take tell about during the break. You said something about a couple kids and. What was the story? You forgot? No, I don't know. Oh, my gosh. Okay. So one of the myths, and I have to share this one because I have, I'm going to admit it and throw myself under the bus, but I always thought that bed bugs were a myth. Like, I totally thought, oh, good night. Don't the bed bugs bite. <laughs> that whole, like, fairy tale rhyme, no bed bugs are real. Like, you can Google this and look at it. They are real. And That's they right. come out at night. Mm -hmm. They suck they, your blood. They, they like come vampires. out at night in order to feed, and they feed off of the blood. Okay, and the what it'll feel like is like a, a pin prick. Okay, and uh, so some people are more susceptible to having to getting the um, the little red bumps from these things. Uh, you know, other people they'll have the type of skin where it really doesn't show up as much. But yeah, they're definitely uh, you know get bed bug infestations. Um, I, you know, it's really a thing that's taking. Um, they're kind of going crazy throughout the United States right now. And, you know, I mean, with, with uh, the advances in, in technology and travel, um, these things are just, they're traveling around in people's suitcases. And, you know. That's one of the things that I think about because I travel and I often wonder, all right, if I'm checking into a hotel, and it probably helps if you stay in a better hotel, but how can you tell like where should you look for bed bugs well before you check in and get in bed <laughs> right right i mean well when you walk into a into a hotel room it's going to be lighted in the inside so more than likely the bed bug is going to be hiding and they'll typically be hiding in the um in the headboard of the bed or they'll be up underneath the uh, the linens or up underneath the mattress um, the other place they like to hide in is where the baseboard and the carpet meet can so you see be, them with the eye they are so small it is it's again it's like the it's like the tip of your pen they're so small you have to magnify your your phone camera in in order to be able to, to see them it's it's crazy so they're not even as big as a flea the they're you know the uh, the adults are definitely going to be the size of a flea okay Oof. Yep. Bugs, bugs, yep. bugs. And, you know, if you looked at them, if you really looked at them, they kind of look like a cockroach from, from above. But if you look at them from the side, they're completely flat. Ooh. And that's how you know the difference. I, I'm like, now I totally look for that stuff. Like, I'm just digging and looking under stuff. I don't know if I'm looking enough to find it, but I'm going to try yep. <laughs> just in case. You're listening to Tampa Home Talk. Thank you so much for joining us today. We've had a good time, even though we're talking about bugs <laughs> with Mark Vasher of Pest Patrol. Not an easy job, I'm sure, by no. any means. <laughs> so if you want to hear our show in its entirety, we had a, a bunch of wonderful frequently asked questions that Mark gets on a daily basis. I am sure one of those questions will bring you a lot of value. So if you didn't have a chance to catch our whole show, go to TampaHomeTalk.com and you will see not only Mark's information where you can reach him, but we'll post the show there where you can listen to the whole thing in its entirety. We're also across the web on Facebook and Twitter and TampaHomeTalk.com, 813-377-2775. Our off-air number, again, you can call or text, 813-377-2775. Thanks so much for joining us this week, this Saturday. We have Woody and Sons in studio, our moving show partner. This week, we're out. Or my mommy will fix it. And we're out.